The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Open, the one and only talk show bringing the best of the Bronx, New York, and the World Street to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host and Cafe Con Leche. And today's show is artistic in nature, and here's a look at what to expect. We've got the best in spring events in the Bronx during our Open Weekend preview. Then we welcome world-renowned artist Esteban Figueroa to discuss his third increment inspired by Dante's Divine Comedy. It's that Puerto Rican pride time of the year again. We have a board member from the National Puerto Rican Day Parade, Trinity Padilla, is here to share details of events leading up to the parade. Then we'll hear from the host of the Bronx Museum Celebration of Puerto Rican History, and then Bobby C. will be here with his sports roundup. And we end the show with our open artist spotlight. Zuli is highlighting Rise and Grind simply as a girl and her guitar. So stay tuned. All that fun is coming your way because now we are officially open. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Open. I'm Ria Valentin, your host in Café Con Leche for the next hour. And well, the warm weather has arrived. And if you are ready to be out for some fun music, festivals, and maybe even some activism this weekend, we've got you covered. So get your pen and paper. It's now time for our Open Weekend Preview. First up, it's the Bronx Puerto Rican Day Parade this weekend. The uh, actual assembly for the parade starts at 1 p.m. at uh, Grand Concourse in 192nd Street and will end at Marshall Parkway. And the after parade celebration happens at 6 p.m. at 1332 Blondale Avenue between Westchester and East Tremont Avenues. That's happening this Sunday, June 2nd, starting at 1 p.m. And for more information, you can check out the website, bxprdparade.homestead.com and next we see renowned singer trombonist composer producer and director right here in the bronx willie colon is in concert he's recorded almost 50 productions and sold more than 30 million records worldwide and he's Coming to Lehman Center on June 8th, produced by Lehman Center and Jose Raposo. You don't want to miss this event. That's happening Saturday, June 8th at 8 p.m. at Lehman Center for the Performing Arts located on the campus of Lehman College, which is 250 Bedford Park Boulevard West in the Bronx. And for tickets and info, you can check out LehmanCenter.org. And lastly, it's my park day at Bronx Park get the whole family interested in keeping their community spaces clean and green by helping the Bronx Park East Community Association on its My Park Day. Help clean up paint benches, even mulch, <laughs> desperately needed spaces. And uh, well, that's happening Saturday, June 1st at 1 p.m. at, uh, excuse me, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Bronx Park and Van Ness Park in the Bronx. And for more details, you can call 347-654-7044. And that is what we have for you in our Open Weekend Preview, people. And, well, we're going to move right along because lovely Gail is here. Ooh, we have lovely animated Gail back this week, and she's become quite involved in everything BronxNet. And here to discuss all the workshops being offered this summer, we welcome Gail. Hi, Rena. Hello, Gail. How are you today? I am feeling fabulous. You look fabulous. Well, you know, because I'm keeping cool because it's like 100 degrees outside. 
Well, that's true, but inside it's freezing. That's why I still have my sweater on. Yeah, it is kind of cool in here, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, what happened to spring? We went from like this... From winter to summer. No um, spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a global thing, and, you know, we've got, um, well, we've got a lot of global issues to tap into today, my That's dear. That's true. Well, I'm very, very excited to be talking about my internship here with, with BronxNet and all the exciting things that are going to be coming up with BronxNet and their workshops this summer. So, you know how, like, a few weeks ago we talked about how I really wanted to learn production and I wanted to get involved? Well, I did, and I've been taking classes here at BronxNet, and I'm been having so much fun, Rena. I know you've become quite the Bronx Net cheerleader. Congratulations on on just you know doing what you said you were going to do, and and I, I I'm hearing that now you're going to like get involved with the piece journalism, and you're actually going to do the uh, what is it the field production classes that are happening at Bragones this summer. That's right. I you know. I'm all over the Bronx, so I can't always come here to Lehman, so I signed up for the field production classes down at Pregones Theater, which is on Walton. It's 571 Walton. It's between 149th and East 150th, and I'm so excited to go out and find those stories, you know, those real Bronx stories. Right, so field is basically being out in, in you know, outside, like a uh, man on the street and so forth, and you also learn the technical aspect of it and and that workshop is actually going to be it begins in June and it's uh, how many weeks is that I I don't remember you don't remember <laughs> that one oh you know what I'll look it up I'll, I'll have it by the time uh, we, we um, actually complete and anyway you know what you can always go to bronxnet.org for the details absolutely you can find all the information you ever needed about any anything on bronxnet's website you're so cute. What happened there, sweetie? You, you, yeah, you, you, did you, do you need some water? You sound a little I do. I do need a little water. Oh, my goodness. I know. <laughs> you know, we so, talked about those allergies two weeks ago. Ugh, they're kicking my butt. Oh, well, again, back to the weather. <laughs> so, you know, um, just back to the global uh, topics, right? We have the Peace Journalism Workshop that's coming up here at BronxNet, which um, Mr. Michael Maxnavi, our executive director, was actually published in the per, uh, Peace Journalism um, Online magazine. And uh, he actually has a beautiful article written about global dialogue and, of, of course, uh, the uh, workshops that were given here at BronxNet, which I happen to participate in. Did did you really? Yes. Could yes. you tell me what peace journalism is all about? Well, you know, what's really interesting about peace journalism, it's really trying to find a nonviolent resolution. And, you, you know, what that means is, is kind of like instead of amplifying things, kind of looking for uh, a nonviolent resolution, something that is a lot more peaceful so that we're transcending, you know, peaceful communication uh, throughout the world. That's interesting. How do you... How how do we apply that to looking for stories in the Bronx? How does, how does one do peace journalism in the Bronx? Well, w again, the classes are, are going to be held here in the, uh, in Bro at Bronx Nest Studios. And um, I believe uh, Mr. Youngblood, uh, who is a professor, is going to be conducting the classes. And, uh, you know, also people, if anybody's interested, you can always uh, contact Marissa White. And uh, she's actually our coordinator. And her number is 718-960-8769. But... Um, Gail, back to you as far as the peace journalism. You know, I really enjoyed this class because um, it, 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 it's almost like, okay, let's just say, I'm going to give you an example. Let's just say there was an accident that happened and somebody was, uh, you know, got hurt uh, or they, they maybe broke a leg, oh, you know, no. just, just, I'm just using a hypothetical, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and so the, the actual journalism approach of uh, the peace journalism approach would be like, uh, basically somebody actually got hit and, and their leg uh, was fractured versus, you know, now they they can't walk. It, it, it's just right. a, a form of communication that um, is being taught so that we're actually, uh, you know, sending out, uh, accurate i mean not that the, the news isn't accurate but it's just instead of it being exaggerated it, it's kind of like this is what it is as a matter of fact and right you know and you here's know, some uh, resolutional options there is that adage that they talk about with news you know if it bleeds it leads and i think that's totally what this is about my friend i think actually went to that workshop as well and she told me about at that time you remember there was the um the shooting at 
at the Empire State Building. Right. And the way that the media covered it, it could be sensationalized or it could be downplayed and just seen for what it is. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But I'd love to take that workshop. That's when? June? That's actually happening. Um, actually, the registration is happening now. So if anybody's interested in that, you really should be sending an email to marissa at bronxnet.org, and that's marissa, M-A-R-I-S-A. -S and um, these classes are actually a week long, and it, it, it yeah, registration's happening now. So, and once again, Marissa's number is 718-960-8769. And, um, you know, you can always go to bronxnet.org if you missed any part of this conversation. Um, Gail. I'm going to get right on that. So, Gail, basically, I just want to know, so I'm keeping tabs. So you're going to do the field production class at Pregones that's starting in June, right? Mm -hmm. And you're also going to do the peace journalism workshop, which um, I don't know exactly what the starting date is, but I do know registration I, is happening June now. 10th. Okay, oh, good. Great, thanks. So, yeah, so registration happens now. And then, you know, for anybody who's, who's interested in reading more on the peace journalism article that Mr. Michael McNabby wrote, you can go to our BronxNet website. It'll be up there as well. You know what? I want to get really good at this. I want to get so good at this that I can do it with my eyes closed. You know, and I have faith that you are going to get good at this. And I'm looking forward to seeing your development. Thank you for joining us, Gal. Thank you for having me, Rena. Woo, keep cool. You too. All right. All right. Well, once again, we're, we have to go. But uh, if you did miss any part of this conversation and you are interested in taking any of, of these classes, whether it's technical, field, journalism, uh, reporting, you can go to BronxNet.org and all the information is there. And that is a media training on all levels. All right. We got to take a quick break. Uh, well, actually, we're not taking a break. We're actually going to check out Rena Gets Lean episode, Excel Martial Arts. Let's check that out. In the first season of Rena Gets Lean, we went on an adventure and tried out different methods of training and eating to develop a healthier lifestyle. While on that journey, we discovered the level of commitment it takes. So join me in season two as we continue to explore and form new habits to reach destination Rena Gets Lean. We're at Excel Martial Arts and I'm about to do a women's kickboxing class. Woo! One, two, this class was filled with like about 40 women and not just 40 women who were like, oh, you know, come. They were like 40 women ready to box. Okay. All right, All right, so life is slow. The class started and everybody was at this, at this pace that I was challenged in keeping up with. Yeah, I got it. Gian Rivera basically walked no, on my stomach no, he <laughs> to remind me <laughs> that they were going light on me. And then we got sectioned off into uh, three sections and we had these cones put on each end and we had to sprint and then, you know, it just got faster and faster and, it, and if you were in a in, in the fast lane, moving too slow, you had to move to the other lane. It was like being on a, on a highway. It was the weirdest thing. In this class, they partner you up with someone. And um, they actually positioned this woman uh, by the name of Priscilla in front of me. I wasn't even in front of the mirror. And Priscilla, mind you, looked like, you know, the studio was built around her. Like, she was the model of the studio. Okay. One, two, one, two, one. Right then and there, in my head, I was so determined to get this right and to actually finish it that I was actually playing the Rocky theme song in my head. <laughs> Truth be told, it's like, I want to live a long life. I want to live a long life. And right now, the reality is, is that in order to really create that, I have to discipline myself to overcome whatever it is that's telling me not to. And that's where I'm at.
Now that I've worked on looking like a fox by sweating like a pig, time to say, what's up, doc? In the next episode of Rena Gets Lean. Hello, welcome back to Open, and well, we have a South Bronx a native, uh, our next guest set out, uh, he's actually has set out to pay tribute to the Divine Comedy by Dante, the famous epic poem encompassing Dante's travel through heaven, hell, and purgatory, and with his own work entitled La Comedia, we welcome Esteban Figueroa to the show. Hola. Hola, ¿cómo está? Good, good, good. All right, so just to start uh, and, and just educate our viewers in case they're not familiar with uh, Dante's Comedy, can you give us a little history about? Well, Dante's Comedy is a book based on a man who lost faith, and it's about changing time at the time. The, the, the lens was invented in the printing press, and it changed the world. People had access to things. Today it's the same thing. It's a computer, and it works the same way. People have access. So Dante, at the time, he lost faith, and he had to go to Inferno, Purgatory, and Paradise to regain it. He had to go to the process of life. The process of life. It's a beautiful cycle that you're referencing. And you, uh, in technically from your visual perspective, mm -hmm. are in halfway there. Like we'll say, right, you're halfway there. We've got the third increment that we uh, actually have not, um, what, that you're actually raising funds to complete and um and we have this beautiful artwork that i believe we're gonna actually discuss a little further in detail but we have to take a quick break so don't go anywhere we'll be right back low fat cheese sandwiches on whole wheat bread chewy and good for you snacks high in calcium help build strong bones and foods rich in fiber are good for your heart so you have the power to dominate Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Find out more at smallstep.gov. How you doing? I just want a uh, regular, no sugar today. You got it. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Did you eat that whole thing today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Hi, how, how are you doing? She's getting big, huh? Big. Yeah, she is big. Let's go. Oh, hey, haircut. Yeah. yeah, looks cute. Come on, let's go. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. Did you find the flashlight on the batteries? Yes. Did 
Could you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hello, I'm Carla Cadena, and you can check out Open 2.0 at 430 on Fridays or on the web at www.bronxnet.org. Hi, I'm Darren Jaime, the host of Open on Wednesdays, and we invite you to join us as we explore in the world of news, politics, and current events every Wednesday at 10 a.m. here on Open. Okay. Oh, it must be careful. Well, that's a nice picture. Come on, Anna. Foreclosure doesn't affect just you. It affects your whole family, too. If you've fallen behind on your mortgage, we can help. Call 1-888-995-HOPE because nothing is worse than doing nothing. Do you have muscle weakness, double vision, trouble chewing, or swallowing? You could have myasthenia gravis, a disease which causes severe weakness in the muscles of the body. You can get MG at any age. It can affect your ability to see, speak, walk, smile, or even breathe. Although not curable, with proper treatment, you can lead a protective life. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hi, welcome back. And before we went to break, we were on set with Esteban Figueroa discussing Dante's comedy and the actual three increments of Dante's comedy uh, encompassing life, the cycle of life. So um, just leading back to our conversation, you have two increments that you've completed and can you just share with us um, what those increments represent and why you chose to do them in Argentina and Puerto Rico? Okay. I was on my way to Europe to start this in, in Florence, but when I went to Argentina I found a large immigrant Italian community that represents what I want because my father was an immigrant from Puerto Rico to New York and they leave a legacy behind. So, so it's Puerto Ricans done in New York City. So I decided to do the Inferno in Argentina. The people in Argentina cooperated completely, the, the commoner. I don't have professional models. And so we did the exercises there and we did the first installation and it creates a modula of the town expressing what the comedy is, what their culture is all about. We put it in a UNESCO World Heritage Site because millions of tourists come every day to celebrate that culture. That's awesome. So you want to share with everyone what an UNESCO World uh, Site is? U UNESCO. World Tourist Site, because that's a big deal. It's the United Nations. Yes. The UNESCO World Heritage Site is to preserve the culture and to have interchange. So in Buenos Aires, the area del de ba pa Barolo, Palacio Barolo, and where the Congress is made, they, they designated that a World Heritage Site. 
in Puerto Rico, El Morro was designated as a World Heritage Site. And that's where people come from all over the world to celebrate your culture. So, so that's the ideal place. Nice, nice. You mean our culture? Our or culture. Our culture. <laughs> or wherever it's right, being shown. Right, right. Got it. I understand. So why did you choose purgatory to represent Puerto Rico? Because purgatory is in the middle, and Puerto Rico is in the middle within its political status. It's been in, in between water, earth, and skies. So it's mi país. So that's what I chose, purgatory. We're always in the middle, not making a decision. Interesting. So Interesting. we Interesting. go to the next level. And we were the first to be conquered by, the, by, by España. Right, which leads us into the third increment, yeah, which right. is what your, your quest is, your quest is right now. So share a little bit about uh, El Paraíso, right? Okay, in El Paraíso, I'm going to go there and do workshops in arenas, where bullfighting arenas, and in the areas where Colón came back from the, from the Americas. And we're going to celebrate and find out what's the feeling, what's the feeling of that culture, what it left behind. I'm planning to bring Goya, Goya cans, because Prudencio, who was a Spaniard, immigrated to Puerto Rico and created a big industry called Goya, doing Goya beans. Now it's time to bring it back to the Paraíso. My father came here as an immigrant and contributed, just like everybody else. So the immigrants do contribute. The rope signifies that contribution, that umbilical cord that we have connected to Europe, connected to our country, all the way to Argentina, which is the last place the conquistadores went to. This is so interesting. So, you know, um, just to share with everyone, his, his style is uh, actually um, draft, right? You, you actually are doing fine art mixed with print and then digitized, digitized. right? Which, so it's photography. It's got all these components, and, and I'm just using this, uh, these terms in which you, you, you can actually elaborate further because they kind of reference what you're discussing from a historical perspective as well. Old, new, old in the middle and new, or like beginning, middle, and end, mm -hmm. right? That's right. And so um, what kind of process is that? Because these are life-size paintings. Well, I do life-size paintings because I require my models to get naked like they came on this earth. Once nice. they get naked, they start working out their issues and dealing with their issues. I ask them to bring people of their support. What issues? Whatever. Internal Fear, issues. Anger, okay. what's happening today. The comedy today is all around the world. It's right. global. Nice. We have the same issues all over the world. I remember when I was in Argentina, they interviewed me on a radio station, and they asked me, do I know, understand, what is the politics of Puerto Rico? And I told them, listen, all you got to do is turn the television in Argentina and you'll find the same politics. So I'm not here for that, you know. The politics in Puerto Rico is the same all around the world. Right, right. So we're right. all connected. Right. But right. long before, because when Dante started, the printing press and the lens came over. So there was no control and everybody had access to the information. Today, our children have the digital access. And that is the printing press and the lens in one piece. They don't control it, but they get educated through it. Right, and so basically what you're doing, right, um, at this, the third increment, is mm. you're actually giving workshops in where you actually have the people inside the image and then they actually are the artists after actually drafting up their issues mm. after being photographed? Yes. Uh, it's I like do, therapy. It sounds like therapy. It is therapy. I, I work with Augusto Boal, and he worked here. He worked with Pregonas and everybody else. And I use his techniques to pull out what's inside of you, how to express yourself. And each model, we all have a common language. If I say I love you, it means one thing. If I say I love you, it means another thing. Right. So we start working those issues until it becomes a common language, and then the group can do these narratives about their community and their lives. So having you on today and sharing all this wonderful knowledge, which you know we could just be on forever, uh, what do you want people to leave with before we go? What do I want people to leave yeah, with? Yeah, like right now, in everything that we've discussed, because we kind of like provided a lot of information. Okay, well the most important thing is that man, man has lost faith, and the most important thing is la familia. You look for faith within your family and you can grow. If you can forgive those that are closest to you, you can forgive anybody. And the truth is, the family is the most important unit. And we tend to lose perspective, we look at corporations, we look at TV, but the most important unit in our lives as a family. That's where we learn, that's where we grow, and that's what we give. Beautiful, thank you. And you're leaving for Spain soon, right? Soon, soon. thank you. And um, is there any place you'd like people to visit your work? My work right now, hopefully I'm working something with Hostess University. It's possible that they will have an exhibition of my work when I come back from Argentina, I mean from, from Spain. Spain. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to ne negotiate so a tour around all the cultural centers in the Bronx so people can share what Dante had 
and what your community expresses about themselves. Beautiful. Thank you so much, it's, Esteban. It's been a pleasure. Likewise, likewise. All right, and once again, you can check out more on Esteban by going to estebanfigueroastudio.com. All right, well, we've got to take a break, but we're, we'll, we're actually going to hear all about that National Puerto Rican Day Parade after the break. Don't go anywhere. I love being in classrooms like this one and learning new things. But I'm a Brooklyn girl, and I know school can be hard. It's demanding, and we kids have many distractions, lots of other things we could be doing. Sometimes even your friends may tell you that school isn't cool, that it isn't the place to be. Don't listen to them. There's nothing more important than education. It's the key to everything else. It helps us understand our world and be better people, better friends, and better citizens. So stay in school, and don't let anyone tell you that you're not good enough or smart enough. Be a star, shine brighter than anyone else, and you'll make the grade. This has been a public service announcement of the Make the Grade Foundation. Go to makethegrade.org to learn more. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. L-U-V, love you. J-K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X-O. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. How you doing? I just want a uh, regular. No sugar today. You got it. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Did you eat that whole thing today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. How, How are you doing? doing? She's getting big, huh? Good. Yeah, she is big. Let's go. Oh, hey, haircut. Yeah. yeah. Looks cute. Come on, let's go. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1 800 for a child. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. Welcome back to the studio. The uh, Bronx Museum of Arts is hosting a celebration tonight in tribute of the uh, Young Lords. And, uh, well, it's actually a tribute to Puerto Rican history and its culture. We have uh, Johanna Fernandez on the phone uh, this morning. Uh, Johanna, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, welcome. Thank you so very much for having me. Yes, yeah, so um, this is wonderful. I mean, it's like, you know, Puerto Rican uh, History Month is actually in November, but, you know, we should just make it June. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying well, that because we have you, we have the Bronx Puerto Rican Day Parade, the National Puerto Rican Day Parade, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So this is truly in honor of uh, Puerto Rican history, but also we, we wanted to do this in collaboration or alongside of the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Uh, and I don't know to what extent your viewers know, but the Young Lords uh, were quite a phenomenon here in New York in the 1960s. They were a radical group um, composed of uh, young Puerto Ricans. They were the Puerto Rican counterpart to the Black Panther Party, formed part of the civil rights and black and brown power movements of that period that transformed the culture and politics of American society. And so tonight, we, it's kind of like a party. Uh, we are going to have incredible performers, among them Flaco Navaja, 
right. who's a singer, actor, and poet. Right. Um, and we are going to have a really special reading from a novel called Bodega Dreams by author and professor Ernesto Quinones. This is a gem. Uh, it is an incredible novel. It's set in East Harlem, and it tells part of the story of the Young Lords. It's gotten awards, and um, we are going to raffle 35 of the novels. So wow. people should definitely join us to grab one of these and take with them home. Sounds like a party is right. So uh, you have an exhibit of the Young Lords, and then in addition to the exhibit, which it, tonight's the opening exhibit, you have this fabulous performance with, that's going to include Flaco Navaja, and you're actually doing uh, 30, 30 book giveaways of, of uh, Ernesto Quinones' Bodega Dreams? Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. And, and just let me give you a sense of, of the exhibit. The exhibit is not happening today. It is, in fact, scheduled for the fall of 2014. Oh, goodness. And this is one of a series of events uh, on the Young Lords in the run-up to that exhibit. And it'll be the first exhibit of its kind in the Bronx. Wow, um, 2014, which means you're obviously gathering up a lot of information because, exactly. um, like, as, as you mentioned before, and in case anybody didn't hear, you know, like, the Young Lords are, are like, um, I guess, uh, parallel to the Black Panthers uh, here in New York, and um, they're actually part of our New York Puerto Rican history. So this, this should be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it, the Young Lords are important because they were... A, group of young people uh, from the, eight, the youngest young lord was 14, who really proceeded to transform their environment. And um, for example, the, the young lords occupied Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx to dramatize the horrible conditions of health that were being uh, given to African Americans and Puerto Ricans. They did a lot of work around childhood lead poisoning uh, and uh, issues of sanitation and poor garbage pickup in the Bronx and in East Harlem. Uh, they're a fascinating group politically. It's important for young people to learn about them. I'm and sorry, I think, I think we're we lost Johanna. Um, I, I'm, I, we lost her. Um, so do we know what time the event starts? Uh, Joanna? Joanna? She's not there. Okay, so the idea is that there's an event happening tonight um, that is opening uh, the actual beginning. Uh, they're going to do increments of this installation of the Young Lords that's happening in 2014. And tonight, Flaco Navaja is going to be performing. And like they said, they're going to be giving away 30 books of uh, a raffle of free copies of Bodega Dreams. And there's the time that it's going to begin. It begins at 6.30 p.m. And that's tonight, Friday, May 31st. And it's happening until 9 p.m. And that's at the Bronx Museum. And of course, for more information, you can just check out their website by going to thebronxmuseum.org. And Johanna, I'm sorry we lost you, but thank you for being here with us. We do have to take a quick break. But when we return, we'll get a preview of the National Puerto Rican Day Parade. Did you find a flashlight on the batteries? Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. Uh, Mom, I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job, and... Son, college is much more important. No. Yes. No, Mom. Yes. Anyways, it's my decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college. So here are the keys. Congratulations, it's officially yours. I'm sure you'll have many happy years here. Except for you, because you'll be gone three years from now, struck down by the same disease that got your father. So you won't be around for them. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test, but you didn't have it. Okay, who wants to check out the backyard? 
For a list of tests every man should have, yeah, go to ahq.gov. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Open. And well, like I said, we're, we're like celebrating Puerto Rican month here in June, even though it's in November. But uh, the National Puerto Rican Day Parade is right around the corner. And you know, it's a day long festive celebrating a month's worth of festivities. So to tell us more about who and what to expect this year leading up to the National Parade, we welcome Trinity Padilla. Hello, Hello, Trinity. Hello. And thank you for here for being here with us. And you actually serve on the board of the National Puerto Rican Day Parade, Inc. Correct. Which is a 501c3. Correct. Right? That actually puts the uh, big to-do festival of uh, the National Puerto Rican Day Parade together. Yes, we do. However, you have all these other events that are happening prior to that, which I think people are not necessarily aware of. Okay. So, you want to share some of them? or Absolutely. I'll take this opportunity to invite everyone to um, one of our most favorite events, which is taking place tomorrow. It's the 152nd Street Festival. And that's just a great outdoors event with a lot of ethnic, ethnic food, live music, fun family activities. And also this Sunday, we have our annual Catholic Mass at the St. Patrick's Day Cathedral. And I urge everyone to go onto our website, nationalpuertoricandayparade.org, and we have a list of all our cal the calendar of events with all our events that precede the parade. And some of them have already taken place, but we have something every day leading up to Sunday's parade. Okay, so now with the Puerto Rican Day Parade, because um, and I'm sorry to bring this up, but you know there's this whole big issue with the beer. There I have is. to bring it up. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, we, we um, I have a campaign that I do called Bandera Fever, mm -hmm. in where we kind of like try to enhance people's knowledge of the culture sure. and, you know, not putting things on the flag, such as cookies and, and, and so forth. And so, it, you know, when I saw this, I, it was kind of like, I mean, they, they're not going to do it because I, I read the newspapers today. However, it's kind of trivial in the sense that the Puerto Rican flag is allegedly put on a beer can. Okay, well, we've already put out a statement, and I'll reiterate the sentiment of the statement, as well as Coors. Um, first of all, let me say that we deeply apologize for it anyone, you know, they, it was never meant for this to be offensive. So we apologize for that. That was never Coors' intention, nor ours. If anything, um, for more than 12 years now, the National Puerto Rican Day Parade has put out a campaign, just as you just said, um, your organization does, to keep the flag free of any symbols. We are prouder than the next person as as far as our flag is concerned. We uphold our flag and our culture in the most positive light possible, and it would never be our intention to do anything to hold it in a negative light or, or attach any kind of stigmatism or misunderstanding to it. That was not the intention. Coors Light has been a sponsor for over seven years now, a very proud supporter of the parade. This was a variation of our logo. It's not specifically the flag. Right. It's not specifically our logo. It was a company's marketing ad. And so we've They've pulled the I distribution. Know, it got pulled. It got, it got pulled, pulled. But I had to bring it up because of course. there's, a, there's a, a clarity, and, and and obviously there's things that need to be clarified. And not only that, I, I brought it up from a personal perspective because um, I think there are people out there that don't even know better. And so, and I mean, know better with regards to purchasing flags that you know have symbols on them. You'd be surprised. Um, when we first started the campaign, and I was new to um, the organization, it was one year. We don't typically march where we marched and we went alongside the crowd and wherever we saw flags with symbols on it that were not the true flag, we walked up to people and gave them the real flag and asked them to please not purchase those, not create demand for that kind of um, Commercialization, merchandise. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised the reaction we got. It was not negative, it was very positive. It was almost like an eye-opening effect on people like, oh my goodness, I did this to my flag, thank you. Right, so, and, right, and that's why, I'm, mm -hmm. that's why I'm bringing it up. And um, with regards to whatever that, that misunderstanding is that has been rectified, now leading into this year's theme, which is health, which is a big issue within the Latino community. Um, we have a really high rate of obesity. Uh, we have a high rate of diabetes. Um, I'm on a, I have a campaign here at BronxNet with Bron under Bronx Strong's umbrella uh, called Rita Gets Lean. And really the idea is advocating this journey of just transformation. Absolutely. And, and, and so why did you guys choose to make this year's theme a health awareness theme? Because it's kind of, you know, interesting, like a parade, party, you know, and there's this health awareness. Like, Well, um, as you've already mentioned, the parade on Fifth Avenue 
hosted by the National Puerto Rican Day Parade is one of the largest outdoor events nationwide and even in the world. So it's a great vessel to be able to put a message out there. It's probably one of the events where we have most of our culture together in one place as, as well as other cultures and the Hispanic community at large. So each year we select a different theme. Last year was education. The year before that was an environmental theme to just kind of get people thinking and also to kind of get our own message for the year across. And it, it, the theme is it plays out in the variation of events that we have as well as the people that, that we honor within the parade. So this theme this year was specifically selected to pay homage to the Puerto Rican community's tremendous contributions to health sciences and administration at large, from our decision makers in Washington to our nurses, our doctors, and our administrators, social workers, everyone. They've made tremendous contributions to health, and we want to pay homage to that. That's nice. Yes, That's and nice. we've been developing a health platform for several years now. One of our new annual events is a walkathon. We've had a walkathon for over five years now, as well as a health summit where there are free screenings, informationals, guest speakers, and so we've been building upon this platform for a few years now. And so the walkathon is actually happening at Roberto, uh, Roberto Clemente's Park, right? Yes, that took place already. Th oh, it did. We missed it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got to be keeping track. And I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of things, and, and I'm really happy that you're here to share with everyone that it's not just the National Puerto Rican Day Parade. There's all of the these other activities that lead up to it that you actually can learn something uh, regarding the cultura as well as you know how we're living uh, nowadays here in New York. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So before we go is there anything you'd like to share with everyone? I would like to share that um, despite all of the things that we mentioned this is an event that takes a tremendous amount of work, a tremendous amount of volunteers, people's efforts, people's time, sponsors, everyone coming together to make this event possible for the community. So we ask for the community support um, in making this the most positive event that we can to represent our culture in the best way possible. We are a reflection of you. So without our community's uh, representation and participation, we can't put out much, so what we're asking is that everyone show up proud, happy, excited, ready to celebrate with us. We're looking forward to it. Look at our calendar of events online. Celebrate with us all week long, and especially this Sunday, June 9th at 11 a.m. Hope to see you there. Thank you. All right, Trinity, Adia, the <laughs> National Puerto Rican Day Parade. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> you don't go anywhere. All right, but for more on the parade, you can check out the National Puerto Rican Day Parade.org. And for more on all the festivities we discussed, we do have to take a quick break. But when we return, Bobby C's here with Sports Roundup. If you want hot topics, current news, fashion advice, and humor included, then Open 2.0 is a show for you. We've got it all. So tune in every Friday at 4.30 p.m. This is Bobby C. reporting from Flushing, Queens, where our first stop in the latest installment of the Subway Series takes us out to City Field, where the New York Mets reeled off two come-from-behind wins, including a shocker over the great Mariano Rivera. For the first time in Moe's Hall of Fame career, the closer blew a save without recording an out. As the Mets posted consecutive 2-1 wins in Tuesday night's victory, the final of two games at City Field before the Subway Series shifted to the Bronx for round two. This means a lot to us, and to, to have two wins against them, um, it's emotional for us. David Wright and Lucas Duda hit RBI singles on an evening when the 43-year-old Rivera, set to retire at season's end, was making his final City Field appearance. He's the best in the business at what he does. Um, he's tough. Um, Murph, huge right there. Um, and then David too. I took a swing and shattered my bat into 50 pieces and uh, you know luckily it just went over the second base inside and you know, we scored a run. Starters Matt Harvey and Hiroki Kuroda dueled a pair of gems. I was excited to get out there. I wanted the, obviously the rain to stop and I think we all did. All did so um, you know it was, it was a fun game. We knew you know if we get some momentum going that we were going to have a good game and, and for the second straight night, Yankee center fielder Brett Gardner robbed Daniel Murphy late in the game, but Murphy would open the ninth with a double, setting the stage for another come-from-behind win by the Mets, 
who reeled off their third straight in dropping the Yankees to three straight losses. It's tough when you when you lose games that you feel like you're supposed to win, and, and we had a real good chance last night, and even better chance tonight, and um, we just weren't able to get it done. A change of venue didn't help the Yanks very much. It also didn't affect the Mets. The Bombers dropped Wednesday night's game 9-4 in the Bronx. Yankees starter David Phelps didn't have it. A five-run first inning highlighted by a Daniel Murphy RBI double to get things rolling for the Red Hot Amazons. Helped the Mets take the first three games of the series. We caught up with Murphy, who hit the ball hard all series after the game. But you got to check out the YouTube channel for more on that. YouTube.com backslash BronxNet Sports. Only Brett Gardner was able to slow Murphy. And in the end, that wouldn't be enough for the Yanks, who also dropped Thursday night's finale at home. Mets starter Dylan G was the story. 12 strikeouts over seven and a third as the Amazons for the first time ever in the Yankee Mets Subway Series went on a sweep, taking the finale 3-1. Marlon Byrd homered in the second inning, and the Mets pitched their way to five straight wins, including four straight over their Big Apple rival. The Yankees have lost a season-high five in a row. Here's Joe Girardi after Thursday night's loss against the Mets. You know, hitting can be contagious, and you can, you know, struggle. I mean, teams go through it, and you got to find a way to get out of it. That's the bottom line. Um, sometimes it can be a blue hit that happens. It can be a lot of different things, but this is part of the game that every team goes through. It's no fun when you're going through it, but it always turns. Tomorrow you try to go out and win a game, you get the first game of a series, and you try to win series. Um, you know, up until you know these last four or five games, we've been winning a lot of series. So tomorrow you, you put this behind you and you focus on the red side. Beauty of baseball has to be that no matter how bad things seem, if the other teams around you aren't faring much better, things won't change very much at all. Case in point, Boston is 6-4 and four over there. Last 10, the Yanks 3-7. and seven. The Red Sox have a two-game lead over the second-place Yankees as the Sox invade the Bronx for a three-game weekend series starting tonight and culminating on Sunday night baseball. So if the Yanks rebound this weekend, they can regain first place. Three night games on tap for the heated rivals. The Yankees will then continue the lengthy homestand Monday when they welcome former Bomber Nick Swisher and the Cleveland Indians to the big ballpark. The pinstripers in dire need of some help, especially offensively, will welcome back Mark Teixeira and Kevin Euclid for the weekend series. The two stars were rehabbing at Double A Trenton throughout the week and are all cleared for liftoff. Tommy couldn't be better for the Yankees. Meanwhile, the Mets are off to Miami for the start of a new road trip. Time for some quick hitters. Hopefully the Mets can keep things going. We stay here in the Bronx for some more Yankee news. Andy Pettit is set to come off the DL on Monday. Curtis Granderson still working his way back. He's doing good things for his alma mater. He will donate $5 million to build the University of Illinois Chicago, a new baseball stadium. Good stuff for Curtis Grandison. Spain has announced a provisional roster, which you can read more about on Yankees.com, for its soccer matchup with Ireland set for Yankee Stadium on Tuesday, June 11th. The Yankees have had soccer fever of late, announcing a new deal with famed Manchester City that will bring a soccer club to the Bronx in 2015. Manchester City defeated Chelsea last Saturday in a dress rehearsal of sorts at Yankee Stadium, only the third soccer game at the ballpark since 1976. The new soccer club could play some of its home games at Yankee Stadium, but it's still not clear whether they will play all. Nonetheless, soccer fans have to be delighted to see more talent coming stateside, thanks in part to the Yankees. And the Yankees, as we have previously mentioned, will honor Hideki Matsui. He will sign that one-day contract we spoke of on July 28th and then be honored before the scheduled game versus Tampa on that day. First 18,000 Yankee fans will receive a Matsui bobblehead for coming out. On the gridiron, Giants head coach Tom Coughlin not pleased with Akeem Nisp excuse me, Akeem Nix for missing OTAs. The Giants family is also mourning the passing of Pro Bowl lineman Bill Austin. He was a member of the 1956 NFL championship team that starred at Yankee Stadium. He passed away at his home in Las Vegas. He was 84. From Jets camp, Mark Sanchez continues to inform the media that he will be the starter. He remains confident in his role. New rookie Jet quarterback Geno Smith has signed on with rapper Jay-Z's agency for representation. He will likely be Sanchez's biggest competition. New Jets running back Mike Goodson has made headlines recently, but not good ones. Head coach Rex Ryan was impressed by Goodson this week at camp and said the organization did their diligence in deciding whether or not to bring the former Raider on board. Goodson was arrested recently for being non-responsive in a passenger seat of a car stopped on Route 80 in Jersey. The car contained marijuana and a loaded gun. He's had his share of legal issues of late. The Jets are hoping those are behind him. 
On the ice, the John Tortorella era is behind the Rangers. The Broadway Blue Shirts decided to let the head coach go after they lost to Boston in the quarterfinals. Several high-profile candidates have emerged, but no clear indication just yet. The Rangers seem to be more concerned with signing free agent goalie Henrik Lundqvist and trying to figure out what went wrong with several stars like Brad Richards, who disappeared in the playoffs. Chicago prevailed in seven games and will face L.A. in the West. It's Boston and Pittsburgh in the East, as the NHL has found its final four. Both series start. Saturday. In the NBA playoffs, the San Antonio Spurs swept Memphis in four games and are bound for the NBA Finals. They await the winner of the Miami-Indiana series. The Heat took a 3-2 advantage Thursday night in what has been a dogfight of a series. Trailing at half, LeBron James rallied the troops with a sideline speech and then went out, backed up his own words. In a 90-79 victory, LeBron scored or assisted on 25 of his team's 30 points in the third quarter, lifting Miami. The Heat will try and close that series Saturday in Indiana or back home in Game 7 if they can't get it done in Game 6. 30 points and 8 boards for James in Game 5. And horse racing fans, Belmont Stakes Week is almost upon us. No triple crown this year, but expect another sparkling finish at the Belmont, one of the coolest events to take in in New York sports every year. Oxbow won the Preakness, Orb won the Kentucky Derby. They should be among the favorites for the Belmont Stakes on June 8th. Mark your calendars for the 8th, which also marks the return of Hoops in the Sun, the Summer Pro-Am Basketball Tournament at Orchard Beach. The league wrapped up its spring season, crowning an indoor champion, the OTR Champs of the Spring League. For more, visit hoopsinthesun.net. We'll see you at Orchard and the Belmont on June 8th. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for my two cents on the latest round of the Subway Series. The Mets are hot, the Yankees are not. Can't get better analysis than that. Congrats to the Mets, who have always been the little brother in the Subway Series and deserve credit where credit is due. It would be nice if the Mets can string some more victories together so we have an exciting summer of baseball with pro hoops and pro hockey done for a minute and the NFL waiting for a return later this summer. Fans of both teams shouldn't read too much into the series. Kudos for the Mets, but it's only May 31st. In the first weekend of June, we still have an entire summer to go, which means the Yankees and Mets, despite not meeting again this season, have long roads ahead. Yankee fans are panicking again, but really should be delighted by what the team has done thus far, given all of the injuries. Met fans should hope that their team gets as up to play everyone else as they did for the Bronx Bombers. Another chapter in the Subway Series. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Shout to PS43 in the house today. The fifth grade, big round of applause. That deserves a break. We'll be right back. You know, when I was younger, man, my, my brother was the one who really took care of me, man. Is that right? Hey, he'd wake me up in the morning, get me ready for school, take a shower, have, make me some breakfast. Where your brother at now? Oh, he know. All right. I get lonely, nobody to talk to. I felt like quitting school. He looked at me dead in my eye, he told me, if not for me, do it for him. Give Josh and our class of 08 the boost they need to graduate. Join us at BoostUp.org. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. This is so cool, Dad. This is so cool, Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who 